Tim, we've got a great show, a packed show. You might say it's probably one of our most super awesome shows that has ever happened. I, uh, we got predictions. We've got to talk about NXT TakeOver. Uh, you know, surprising things over in New Japan have gone on. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be an amazing show. A, gr a great show. A great show. Okay, Adam, I have a question for you. If you had to describe today's show as Vince McMahon would say, how would you say it? Uh, hold on, hold on. That would be some great... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new episode of As the Buckle Turns. I'm Adam. I'm Tim. And as I said earlier, we've got a great show for you this week. That's some great shit right there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be like, we got a lot of things to talk about, complain about. Not a lot to complain about. Lots to talk about. We got a lot to Tim? complain about. <laughs> Uh, where do where do you want to start this? I, I mean, ooh, I mean, can we? A record has been broken. A and a, never thought this record could have ever been broken. It's been six hundred and fifty one days of this drought going. I am. I have finally predicted overall more correct than you have. <laughs> Yeah, it's been yeah. SummerSlam 2017 that I find that I the last time that I had more in the on our tally correct than you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're bragging when it's been two shows. Good job. <laughs> two wins in a row. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The champ is still here. I retained beautifully. Overall, I got I got the the ending that I wanted though. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you. It, it was a much better ending than expected. Um, but we'll talk about NXT in a little bit. Um, so I just actually found a piece of news that we didn't get a chance to talk about before the show. So I'm just going to do it here. Oh. Uh, okay. So according to Ryback, he was asked how much, pe much money people make off of merchandise. Uh, and he said when you're selling a shirt for like $30, a t-shirt for $30, you make a dollar or under a dollar a shirt and um and he says as wrestlers as independent contractors you should be able to negotiate wwe says you are says anyone can negotiate i can tell you firsthand that if you do that you're not going to make any money you're going you're not going to be used um so everyone signs the contract just goes along with it because that's what everyone has else has done so whether that's true or not who knows um I, so I doubt um, Roman Reigns, John Cena is making only a dollar a T-shirt. Uh, true, but at the same time, that's actually not that bad of a deal, considering, like, I my job outside of this is screen printing, so I see the other side of this business. Mm -hmm. I see how much it costs. You know what we do it because we see what the final prices we know how much they're selling that shirt for okay. and we've had shirts that have come through at 45 dollars hmm. and i see how much it costs us and i go that's a shirt that's going to make the parent company a lot of money mm -hmm. now as talent wwe and and no normally i would bash them for some of their business practice but it's smart Mm -hmm. They are actually the ones buying the shirts, yep. the, 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 the stock. They're the ones who are taking the risk on whether or not it will sell. Yep. So I understand why they're, and they're basing all the merchandise on characters that they control. Yes. <laughs> you are, it's not like football or another sports organization. Now, at the same time, though, AEW is changing that paradigm. Yes. Um, They're going, no, no, no. We'll take care of the, the risk end of it. Yeah. But this way you get more in your pocket as the as the wrestler. You can, if you want to 
start taking over the buying the stock by all means yeah um it'll be one of the, interesting to see how they that works out for them and the the people who are working for them um my main thing thought is on this if you have a 30 dollar t-shirt and you're selling it for and it costs you two bucks a shirt what no how much is the uh, issue? Be, uh, okay a uh, little bit of a slight expertise on this one a standard white white print mm -hmm. per shirt costs six dollars to print okay so let's say we'll use that just for the this example so it costs you six bucks to, to print even because any bulk it, no well that that's considering a 300 to 1000 print run yeah i'm gonna say WWE is making when they get their prints they're doing more than that much but we'll still use uh, those pro we'll still use those numbers though because we don't need yeah. to know the exact but so if you're okay so if it's gonna cost about six dollars per shirt you're selling it for 30 so you're making uh net pro you're making about just under um about 24 dollars yeah for sure no i mean you also now have to out of that 30 dollars you're also paying the uh oh that six dollars does not include how much it costs to have the shirt originally manufactured that typically is about uh depending on the a hundred percent i'm gonna take a standard shirt 100 percent cotton mm -hmm. nothing special about the shirt it's three dollars okay so that's a nine dollar shirt already okay. that you're selling at 30. So, okay so if you do that so that you're making 21 dollars profit um i'm still gonna say you could you can give more than a dollar to your talent oh yeah that. i mean out of that 30 you still have to pay the vendor to sell it um, any and all shipping costs for I'm basing it, taking it from venue to venue. I'm going to base it more just simply on um, the but whole. But that includes, yeah. I'm going to base it completely on like house shows and their their network, the shop zone. Like, no, we're not talking about like Walmart or anything like that. No, 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 no. I'm I'm talking at taking the shirt from venue to venue when you're when you're traveling. You know that cost. I mean, probably overall, the true profit margin on that is closer to ten dollars. Uh, I probably disagree. I think it's going to be at the low end. It would probably be closer to fifteen. Um, okay. Because if you're um, if you, venue to venue, you have trucks going there, so it's not going to cost you as much. It's not going to cut the cost. Isn't going to be that much to ship it. True. Um. So, but again, you can still. On a fifteen dollar profit, you can still give two, three bucks and still have a good profit. Exactly, exactly. Um, and but here's the thing. But here's also the thing is I also think I do think it's it is fair if they're basing how much they're paying you per shirt or wherever it is on how popular you are. So if you yeah. have higher, if you have like a John Cena level um, sellout on your T-shirts. You should be making a good, a, a good like a quarter of the profits. Uh, um, yeah, honestly, it should always be a percentage, not a dollar amount per yeah. shirt. You're look, you should go. No, I want this percentage. Yeah. That way, that way, your boss can then later on go, "Hey, you're doing a whole lot better. Let's renegotiate that percentage." Or you can come back a year later and go, "Hey, let's renegotiate that that percentage." Yeah, and you. The problem is who it's coming from. Yeah, Ryback is not exactly a good source. <laughs> I don't know. He's been some dead on on some things lately. That uh, now that we, we've seen, we've seen some stuff. Um, but at the same time, what he said he's seen that could have been for him and people around where he was on the exactly. car. Exactly. And so I'm not. That's some, I do want to take into context. He, at the end of his career, his run with WWE, he was on the very mid, low mid-card act. Um, yeah, and he was he almost was, jobber. And he was having those issues with the company as well, so he probably, I, I don't blame him. They still should have been paying him more of his, than that two, three dollars, I don't think is unreasonable. If you're in the mid-card range and you're doing a decent, you're 
popular, you should be getting at least five dollars. Um, anything above that, it's like you should be, you gotta be a, a how a, like a Seth Rollins, a Roman Reigns, a Triple H. Um, a, even I'll go as far as Finn Balor, even though he's barely being used right now. Um, to get more. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It's gonna be Demon Finn at name redacted. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I don't. That show doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, by the way, Wrestle Talk stole our our joke. What the name redacted thing? Yes, they did. <laughs> oh <laughs> come on! They've only, they've only seen them do it once, but I was like, I mean, we've ripped them off enough. <laughs> I know. Hey, but we give them credit. Well, not just that. We're a much smaller show. <laughs> I don't know Give what you're us about. credit. I don't know what you're talking about. We're a far bigger show than that puny little show over in a small little country called England. <laughs> what have they ever done? I know. What have they ever do? Such a small country ever do? <laughs> oh, no. Ugh. All right. So, what else? What do we have on there? Um... I can't remember what we talked about. I mean, we can complain about WWE, um, congratulate a wrestler, okay, or talk about the clusterfuck that is happening on August thirty first. We'll save the the clusterfuck uh, for the before predictions. Okay. Um, let's go with the congratulations because oh. that's a quick one, and it's actually we'll start off with something some positive stuff. Yes. It, somewhat. <laughs> Uh, so congratulations to Dean. I mean, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta get used to this. John Moxley. Yeah. There you the go. Mox, there you go. For winning the IWGP United States Championship on Wednesday from Juice yes. Robinson. Um. So, and from what I've been telling you, it actually was a pretty good match. Tim, 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 it. I don't even care about how great the match could have been or whatever. Congratulations on John Moxley for getting that. Dude, did you check out his ring gear? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, um, oh, so you're a fashion expert now. No, I... <laughs> no, I... Looking at... It, dude, it's such a departure from what we've, one, seen from him. You know, yeah. CZW, it was a tank top and jeans. Yeah. And then WWE was tank top and jeans and then t-shirt and jeans. Uh, like, hold on, hold and on. Now, hold on. You missed a big part of... His ring gear in WWE. Oh, sorry. The um, black pants and um, SWAT gear. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> black pants and SWAT and uh, tactical gear. gear. Yeah. And then tank top and jeans. <laughs> yeah. T-shirt and jeans. Yeah. Uh, cut off in jeans. Yeah. But we've always seen him in full-length pants and. Surprisingly, seeing John Moxley's thighs, I'm just like, it was more the knee pads and the uh, the ankle boots. Yeah, the boxing boots is what. Um, yeah, they're similar to. No the boxers even wear like full like full length uh, uh, mid mid calf boots as well, but like there is a specific style like Kurt Angle wears. He wears the sh the low the low ankle uh, boots. Or yeah, the shoes. what um they had you have boxers who wear actually low end boots, but the, what he had on is constantly referred to by, um, by people as boxing boots, and they are a specific yeah. thing where it's like um so you're not you're not barefoot in the ring, right. but you're uh you have something, and that's apparently what he was wearing. Um, yeah, they're. they're what I've been told, they're basically a pair of slippers. Yeah. It's basically, <laughs> what it does, they do is they give you um, stability at your ankle so you, it's hard, you don't roll it. Yep. But you, you're basically moving around like you're barefoot. Yeah. And it gives you traction like a, a boot. Uh, the traction of a boot. Basically, it's like those five-finger toe like. shoes. Um, but you actually, have, they come up on your ankle but it's like you're barefoot. Yeah. <laughs> uh... So, but yeah, congratulations bike, again. Bike shorts. Yeah, bike <laughs> and shorts. And knee pads. And because it's 1997, he has the barbed wire on, around white and one left side. Well, yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's another. I mean, who doesn't story. have one? Of, uh, have that or a Chinese uh, tattoo? Yeah, Come hey, on. Hey, um, 
And by the way, I stole that joke from um, Russell Talks, so I guess we're you even. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I only listened to that podcast this, uh, like this morning, actually. <laughs> um, but no, so but yeah, it was good. And did you see what he his apparently his new finisher is? Yeah. So um, so or, the finish. If you don't want spoilers for this, if you haven't got a chance to watch this, um, don't listen. But it's been a few days, so I don't think I'm probably spoiling it. <laughs> so he hit Juice Robinson with his the typical how he was doing the dirty deeds. Yeah, um, it's a butterfly soup, uh, butterfly DDT, DDT. Um, or the double arm, whatever you want to call it, DDT. Um, he kicks out of that. Um, the match continues when he to put him down for good. He hits like almost a combination of the double arm hook DDT into a glorious DDT. Yeah, and drops you like right on the head. So it's like, um, uh, it what, what they describe the second one. It was more of a Any further rotation, and it would be it would have been considered a butterfly suplex yeah, or a butterfly yeah. pile driver, uh, um, brain buster. Uh, yeah, but but with the the side with it being on the side, it would have been a butterfly brain buster. But it, I don't know if Juice just didn't get the jump for it mm-hmm. because I think he was because you see that he jumps and he really kicks out hard. I'm willing to bet they were going for the brain buster. If possible. Um, but from what the images I've seen of what it is, I'm okay. It looks the way he, because when he lifts you, the image that I've seen, it's like he's lifting up. He's always going back when he's lifting up. So it's, yes, which I like. Instead of lifting like where Bobby Roode does it, he picks you up, lifts you up. He lifts you up and then drops you. No, he's basically starting to pick you up as he's falling back. So your legs are going up, and by the time your head hits, your legs are going to be up in the air a lot more force down on you. And I think that that's a better version of it because it's safer with a bump. Yes. Um, as where the brain buster can do, if you hit wrong, you could be done. True, um, but it is New Japan and they are known for doing an amazing job of training their necks. <laughs> yes, so that's, one, that's a different thing as well. So I'm okay, I'm, I'm okay with it, but at the same time, um, I think even New Japan needs to, at this point, they need to start keeping an eye on those areas a little bit better. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, they don't, they they haven't had reports of people with neck injuries all that much. No, but um, that just because you, you don't hear injuries that all that much doesn't mean later in life you won't have major problems. And that's, that's what I'm true. More, and that's what I'm more focused on. Not necessarily neck injuries now, I'm talking about problems with your neck later on. Um, and, but having stronger necks does help. Exactly. But you again, just as Brock Lesnar after WrestleMania, <laughs> you still have to figure out. You still need to protect that, and I think they need to start keeping an eye on that a little bit more. There's just many things you can do the hard hitting style that they still do, and have the kind of bumps they do, but still, but safer. Yeah. Um. For it. and that's one thing that I will always give WWE credit for is that they. It has hurt the products in, in some fashion, some fashion, not that much, but where their bumps are a lot safer. Um, so I think the industry as a whole needs to start figuring out the ways to do this, um, just so people don't later on, because we all saw what happened like from the, the wrestlers from the 80s, 70s, 80s, um, and now 90s, well 90s, it's, heck, it's concussions, but yeah. who, um, are now later in life and they have these problems and who they they, they blame um re- being a wrestler and all that and they don't have the money to show for it i mean you made the choice but at the same time yes we see that now we need to take make sure we're trying to figure that out right um, right but again um congratulations um the mocks for capturing your first singles title outside of wwe and uh, good luck at Dominion, which we will get to later for yeah. the predictions. So you, you know who check out the is? show later in the show. You know who his opponent is? Uh, I forget who it is. Oh, no, no. You know who his father is. Oh, crap. Who, who did... His, his opponent is Red Shoe's son. Wait, what? He was a... 
basically a, it's a, long, a young lion. Lying. He's only been in the oh, business. Oh, he's facing of, off against a, li- a young lion? Yeah, it's basically going to be a squash match, probably. Oh, um, probably. He's only been in the business, been there for like about two years, so it's, he's still a young lion. So he'll probably get squashed. But it's Red Shoe's son. And, it, and I, I have noticed that Wikipedia, uh, whoever puts the matches in for Wikipedia, they almost have the card down perfectly. Yeah. Um, so, so they look like they're going to be opening the show. Well, for New Japan they, and other shows, they usually get it. WWE, they're always wrong. Oh, yeah. Well, um, because WWE doesn't have a set, uh, like, a set program until that afternoon. Um, sometimes. Yeah, and because they're still putting the goddamn script together. Yep. Um, I wonder what big promotion had that problem right before they went under. Hmm. I know I started with a W, but I don't think that the W was another W. I think there was a letter in there. Was it B? I don't know. D? I don't know. C? Yeah, I think it's C. But what was the letter? There was a C in there somewhere. Yeah. What was the What was the last um, letter? Good. It it wasn't a W. No, no, no. It wasn't W C. It was W C W. Yeah. Fucking. Seriously, get your shit together, creative. You know what? Should we go right into that? We're there. Let's start bitching about WWE. All right. <laughs> so we've complained about creative. John Moxley finally did the expose, you know, pulling the curtain back on WWE's creative, how it's just a spider work of people afraid to bring ideas to the top because... Well, Vince does what Vince wants, so and anything that you've created probably will get shit on at some point. Yeah. Um, but this week, it seemed to be the most obvious sign of SmackDown and creative just being like, ah, I really don't have anything this week, so why don't we just make SmackDown be a raw recap this week? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no let's, be, let's be clear. It wasn't... The writers who won't decide this. This is Vince McMahon who decided it. Well, oh yeah, that's true. So there was probably an amazing, like at one at one point during the the scheduling of this show and the creating of it, there was probably an amazing show in there. <laughs> and then Vince got involved and went, "This is going to be some good shit," <laughs> and um, really just took a shit on a piece of paper and handed it to somebody. See, here's the thing. Here's what my opinion is of this, because he knows he has Super Showdown coming up this Friday. Um, you gotta promote that. You gotta promote that, but at the same time, he knows he doesn't give a shit about the the um Saudi show, these uh, Saudi shows, other than the fact that they have to happen because yep. money. Um, but he doesn't really care about actually what goes into them. Um, no, it's a house he, show. It's, it's a house show. Nothing's. It's the most predictable. If anything, these shows, the one that they'll have in October, is going to be the most predictable shows of the year. It'll be the ultimate rubber stamp formula show that you'll have. There will um, be no heart in there, no surprises. Yep. Except for Brock Lesnar cashing in probably on someone and walking out WWE or Universal Champion. And uh, it's going to be a really confusing Monday for me because canon wise, I can, I refuse to accept that name redacted even happened. I so mean, what I'll see is that didn't happen. one week. There's, there is no show. That's, that's not a oh. show. There's, there's nothing. Well, there. yeah, what yeah. Are you talking about? Uh, but Monday, <laughs> <laughs> Monday, Brock Lesnar comes out with the universal championship and everyone just accepting that he stole it. He just straight up stole it from, call in, from the champion? back room. That's not how the championships work, but everyone's acknowledging no. it. But you know why they're going to acknowledge it? Because it's Brock Lesnar. Because Brock Lesnar did yeah. it. It's personally fine. Personally fine. Whoever the champion he, he beats for the championship, um, if they try to do it to him, they won't acknowledge yeah. it. Because, no, no, you have to win it in the ring. Where Brock just stole the belt. Nope, it he just... gets what he wants. Kind of yeah. like when, last year at SummerSlam, where the writers had this great ending in mind for the show... With the United, the reunion of the Shield, instead of on Raw, and Brock Lesnar comes in and she saw, pitches a different story at 6:30 at night before the show is about to begin, and Vince decides to go with what Brock wants. And what happens? Everyone looks like an idiot except for Brock Lesnar. So, 
Yeah, that that was a terrible, terrible ending. It was supposed to be like a cliffhanger ending, except for everyone's just laying there for so long. They stretched it out way too long. Well, oh, remember if you remember this, this matchup between Brock and Reigns was a short matchup because they wanted to get they knew Reigns was going to get booed for winning the Universal Championship. They had to get off. Um, but having the shield would have been like at least a cheer there. The shield, because everyone loves the shield, regardless yeah. of Reigns. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> they were a great stable when they first came in. But at the same time, and it would have been a better ending, because it, even if they brought, you put Brock wins, Brock loses, Reigns is champion, and you stop um, Braun from cashing in, and he's laid out, the thing it doesn't hurt Braun is because you had to have three people put him down, right? Um, but it's the Shield, so it would have been a far better ending than what they did on Raw the next night. But Brock Lesnar, who looks like the biggest doofus of them all, is Braun because he can't figure out how to cash the damn briefcase in. <laughs> I know, I know. Ah, uh, but that. You know that those are all stories that creative has created. And you're just like, this is terrible. Yeah. This is lazy. SmackDown had a segment between Shane, Roman, and um, Drew... Uh, I almost said Drew McIntyre. Drew Galloway. No, it's Drew McIntyre. In oh, Drew McIntyre. It's Drew Galloway well, everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Drew McIntyre. Which was almost beat for beat the exact same uh, segment that they had the night before on Raw. Right, the uh, night before. Hey Adam, uh, are you ready? Here comes another thing that I steal. I'm stealing for Wrestle Talk. Okay. Right. Control um, C, Control V. Aha! If you're gonna do the ha thing, you take the glasses off. You pinch the nose. No, no, no. For me, the nose pinching moment really comes with how cringy oh. Oh. the opening segment of SmackDown was. No, 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 no. I have something for the pin the nose pinching for you. Okay. Before we get to that, uh, Smack the fully going to SmackDown. It's the whole how last week on Monday Night Raw it was supposed to be a cash in. Brock was determining who's gonna. Cash in it. Didn't happen. Yes. So they build up where Stephanie McMahon says you're gonna have they're gonna punish Brock Lesnar for not um respecting the briefcase and continue to um ignore the completely follow the rules of everyone else of fake cash ins. Um, yeah, I know. To him saying, Oh, bro, to Paul Heyman saying he's going Brock Lesnar's gonna cash in on Seth Rollins on Monday. And what happens on Monday? You build this up to the the third hour where when a downed Rollins after Baron Corbin beat him up, a Brock yep. Lesnar comes out, beats up Rollins, and Paul Heyman says, cash it in, cash it in out, and Brock says, no, Friday. I wonder what's happening on Friday. Oh, wait, nothing's happening Friday. He had the moment right there because then... Then he knows that he can go in and beat. <laughs> yes, it'll be Brock Lesnar versus Baron Corbin <laughs> at at that. But it'll be Seth can't just show up and ta and try to take the belt back. Yeah. He doesn't have. Ah, <sighs> okay. So, 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 but yeah. So after this whole build up, once again they fuck us over, and it's one, it makes you wonder: Was that he supposed to cash in there? And Brock said, no, no, we're going to do it Friday. No, what I really think is that originally the script had, and the script of the show had him cashing it in that night. That's why Seth lost. That's why he was defeated at the end of the night. Vince McMahon remembered about 10 minutes before the segment was airing yeah. that, oh, shit, there's a match happening Friday. For that belt. <laughs> and Brock Lesnar has been um, promoted for that show and has doesn't have a match yet. Oh, yeah. You know what? We're going to push it off till then. 
Oh, it. Um, it again, Adam, shows Adam, how. Quick, quick, wait, quick question. Um, yeah. How can oh, I, there we go? There we go. Pinch the nose. Get the it side. Hurts. Get the, we gotta get the nose. The noise. Oh, it hurts so bad. Get the grunt. <sighs> there we go. But uh, Adam, I have a question for you. Okay. How does, I, I don't understand. How does there's a match on Friday? There's nothing going. There's no show on Friday. I don't. I, there must be some somehow show somewhere going on Friday night. I know. I know. I know what's gonna. I know what's happening. Vince has decided to apply the twenty four seven rule to the Universal Championship now. <laughs> no, no, no. There's some random like it's gonna be a street fight in some random parking lot. <laughs> A uh, quick notice. Uh, um, we have oh, a wait, new actually, twenty four seven second. champion. Um, oh, no, before we get into that one, no, I uh, just realized yeah. that Money in the Bank contract yeah. is a match for anywhere at any time. I th think it has to be an official show, though. I don't think so. It's yeah, you can catch it at any time, but I think it's officially has to be at a show because no one's ever done it. Like at there, and I don't think they want to do that. I think because it'd be no, dumb I, I think to it do. does. It's a standard rules match. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. You have to have like it has to be like a show, I believe. And it would make sense to do like um when, when and wherever. Um. But anyway, we, uh, we have a new twenty-four-seven champion. champion. His name is Ginger Mahal. Ginger. Ginger. Sorry, my bad. I misspoke. I almost called him Ginger. That would be insulting. Calling not calling him by his correct name. Ginger Wait, what? has become the a two-time 24-7 champion at the airport today. Only to have our truth begin for our fifth time on the airplane while Ginger was sleeping. <laughs> That's right, ladies Wait, and gentlemen. Wait, they're traveling on the plane together? Yes. <laughs> Which means that our truth is probably going to lose it back to Ginger. Ginger. And then... What? It's Ginger. Ginger. Yeah, sorry. Ginger. <laughs> um, it's Ginger. How, how did you get me to start doing that? Never mind. <laughs> it's Ginger. It's, trust me. Um, at least one more time on this plane trip. Or someone else. <laughs> but I don't so, know why. Why would you travel with a, a group of people who are after your championship? I don't, I don't know. And now, here's another question. The first time Ginger won the title, he won on a golf course. In full ring gear. Full ring gear. Full gear. Okay, now, I don't have glasses, but I'm taking off my metaphor of glasses. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. See, Look. We, we said, yes, use social media for this, but not make it realistic, not fucking ring gear. Who's wandering around in ring gear <laughs> on their day off? I just want I just want fans when they see some of this happening if they're filming something like, and they see someone in ring gear and you see like our truth or whoever the twenty four seven champion is just start yelling out when you know they're filming this it's like <laughs> there's a guy in ring gear he's coming for your champion run <laughs> and get and That'd have every great. every time every take they do this they constantly have to someone is they have to like. It gets back to Ben's. He's just like, okay, no more ring gear. You have to be in street clothes. Or it gym would make clothes. more sense if you were in street clothes. <laughs> See, Unless guess... you're wandering around backstage. Backstage, you might already be in your ring gear. Yes. But when you're outside on a golf course, why are you in your ring gear? Yeah, no. See, I won't be. I understand the thing for a ref being in the stripes, because he's a ref. But yes. I think. You, I think you need to be a little more clever. Because if I see someone walking, even if you were in street clothes, you're walking with a guy with a ref shirt on, <laughs> run. You, I wanna, I'm waiting for where actually see the time where we see someone in street clothes sneak up, attack, and all of a sudden you just see some random guy in the background turn around, rip off a jacket, and it's a ref. <laughs> or better yet, it's no. like... <laughs> this, this is the moment that I want to see it happen. Someone finds out where they're going to be f filming the next, you know, couple of these things. 
independent wrestler shows up, someone looking to get their big break, <laughs> convince somebody else, a, a friend of theirs, to be a ref. <laughs> somehow get it done that they pin the person the ref comes in and counts it they are actually in canon on camera crowned the 24 7 champion because some mix-up happened at that moment wwe has to go oh crap and then they run away with it and get arrested for stealing <laughs> uh, i mean or just go no by the rules of this belt, I am this champion. No, 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 no. You have um, to film me being pinned again. No, 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 no. See that happen? Like interrupt it, like this, do it, but actually have someone on a cell catch it on their cell phone. Because if you do that during a recording, that recording is never gonna make it to air. Like oh, that's true. Someone else that's records true. it. Like if another friend is there and they record it on their phone and they tweet it out. Then it's like, oh, this got out. And you can have this guy twenty four seven champion. He has like a, a replica of that ugly twenty four seven championship. <laughs> um, and he's just like, and he has his friends trying to win it from him. Yeah. And of course, and of course they blur out like the WWE logo or something like that. <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, so it just makes no sense. It's dumb when you're in ring gear. Oh. Um, and I'm sad to say, I mean, like, and this is the main reason why I say this is sad, but they got huge social media network um, numbers on the video for the mm -hmm. ginger winning on the golf course. And, like, and when I saw them, I felt like I instantly, like, when I read that, I'm like, fuck, I contributed to that. No more. If I see <laughs> one of these things, I'm not watching the video. I'll click on the news piece. I will not click that video. I will not give them, uh, a view when their guy who wins the belt is in full ring gear outside of an event. On a golf course. Yes. In an airport. He's basically just wearing that. He's not wearing pants. No he's, shirt. No pants. He, no, uh, but he does have shoes. So he doesn't get service. No. He's in his underwear technique, basically. <laughs> so I will not give you a, a view. And I think no. I want everyone out there are are. Less than tens of fans to protest this. <laughs> Hopefully, Vince McMahon will listen to the microphones in your office and probably now in my room um, and think that we have thousands of fans. Oh, hold on, my bad. Let me rephrase that. Our tens of thousands of fans to protest this. Um, so he'll hear that and he'll think we actually have a, an audience and he'll instantly make people wear um, street clothes. All right, anyway, okay. Let's move on to SmackDown. <laughs> so, yes, we have tens upon tens of fans <laughs> for our show. Uh, I mean, he means oh, wait, thousands. No, we're going by WWE numbers, so that's 10,000 <laughs> faithful, faithful <laughs> listeners. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't, Vince, if you're listening to the micro, in the microphone, he didn't mean tens. He meant tens of thousands. Just so you're, yes, just totally. Be clear. Just be clear. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Is relatively new, so. <laughs> oh, I have one last person that I'm complaining about regarding WWE and their lazy, lazy creative, uh, and that's the uh, Heckle and Jai, Heckle and Ha, ah, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, Alexa Bliss that they have going on right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> on Raw, Miss Bliss is a face who does face things and hangs out with like there's no. Like under like under current of like she's, uh, sorry I keep forgetting who it is that she's teamed up with right now. Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. It does not seem to be that like she's using Nikki. No. It seems more genuine that she actually likes Nikki, wants to spend time with her and work with her. Yeah. And then on SmackDown, she's a heel. <laughs> who does heal things like insult the audience, yep. insult the show, insult the other people on the show, or a catty little bitch, or coffee, and then to yell at someone for not to get more coffee or to get the right cup and yeah. use terrible coffee on SmackDown. It's like, okay, um, are Tuesdays just a bad day for Miss Bliss? I mean, oh, yes, it is. 
You know why? That's supposed to be her day off. I, I guess so. I, I mean, I would be a little bitchy if it was my day off and I had to go to work again. <laughs> And, and, and nobody so, had good coffee. You know why she's pissed, she was mean? She was pissed off. Not only gives her a day off, she didn't get to go home and spend time with her pig. I know. Her pig is cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. The fact that she has a pig is still awesome. I love that pig. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah. So, let's just talk about that. And not only that, did we, we get uh, we got uh, a number one contenders match for... The WWE SmackDown Women's Championship number one contender, which Alexa Bliss won. Yeah, she's a raw talent. Yeah. And you know what the funny thing is? Vince really, you know, Vince really loved that segment. The moment of Bliss. It was all blondes. Yes, in the match. Because it's all blondes. <laughs> who cares who wins? A blonde won. <laughs> oh, by the way, I didn't realize this because I don't watch Raw or SmackDown. Um, Miss Little Miss Bliss is ripped. Yeah. Oh yeah, she got in much, much yeah. like she got in great shape. I mean, she uh, was after always her time in great off. shape. She was oh let's get this like she's always been in great shape. But like I just noticed like I saw the photo of her like raising her hand and I was like, holy crap, she's like thinner than like a completely like oh, ripped. No. I'm like, yeah. holy crap. Her um, this the time off that she that she just got back from. Yeah. She was just working out. Yeah, it's like, hey, good for her though. I'm like, um, so it was still, it's like, it's like I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow, when did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all this time Ooh. off that she's had back and forth from the injuries. So at least she's still, she's been still be able to work for the most, work out for the most part, which is good. Yeah. Uh, because that's actually one of the good th- best, the best things when you actually are dealing with an injury, if you can still keep working out. You, it's easier when you're recovering, when you're clear from that injury to keep, right. to move in because you're not starting from scratch because you couldn't really do anything um, based on the injury. Mm-hmm. Um, so it there, so which is a good thing. Um, I do, I will say this, I'm actually kind of, I can't believe I'm saying this because I was, not even that long ago, I was getting sick and tired of Alexa Bliss being in a championship match. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was recent. But, but now I'm actually kind of glad. Like, okay, no, okay. Well, I think it's because she's been, she's has been injured. She has been from the, away from the title picture for a very long time now. Right. Um, which is, so it's kind of be good. It'll be interesting to see how they, this dynamic plays off, especially with her opponent is Bailey. And the, we all know what happened the last time these two did. Bailey's run didn't last that long. No, Bailey's run didn't last long, and didn't we have the segment of "This Is Your Life, Bailey"? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. Let's uh, let's try not to make those mistakes again. That would be terrible. Yeah. Um. So. But so, but we do know we know that they can, they, um, it'll be a decent match, at least. Um. So. Yeah, and then. My God! Besides the the copy and paste of Shane, oh uh, uh, yep, we got we got an announcement. I think it was on Raw. We got the announcement. We it's been made official. We know who Roman Reigns will be facing at Stomping Ground after he um, apparently loses to Shane McMahon's at this on Friday. Just when they apparently are gonna have a street fight because nothing's happening Friday. Yeah, um, I don't know where they're doing these. Uh, this uh, people are fighting people, but yeah. that's weird. Um, he'll be taking on uh, the, a feud that we've never seen before, is in, in Drew McIntyre. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait! Didn't they just have a feud at WrestleMania that was a really boring match? Wait, they didn't they have a feud look, weeks, a week ago? They had a rematch that. Uh, look, didn't we just finish up their feud? Yeah. And kind of, I feel that. Drew's work with Shane really hasn't st- ended that feud, so we're just having a really long extended feud. I will say this: um, as bad as um, it was that um, Drew McIntyre was caught up into the um, the pull of Baron Corbin's mid card of evil, 
Yes. Um, now he's got. He's got. Now that that's over with, and they've turned on each other, we now have. He's got pulled into the Omni Shane. Yes, I'm taking both from Wrestle Talk. <laughs> See, Wrestle Talk, I, I give you, you credit. I give you credit for the stuff I steal from you. You give us credit for what you steal from us. Um. But the Omni <laughs> Shane. It, I will say this, it's a step up for it, at least. It, true. <laughs> true. I mean, he's now working with the best in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad that he's stuck in with these people, but at least he's a step up from Baron Corbin. Yeah, he's moved from like working with the mid-card of Doom. <laughs> mid-card of Evil. The, We're stealing yeah, this sorry, stuff. Sorry, mid-card of Evil. We're stealing this uh, stuff. <laughs> he's moved up to... Yeah. Working with the best in the world. the world, you can't get any better than this. No, so it's, until it's he all goes downhill his, from there. Until he no, until he goes on his own. Right. You can finally they trust him enough to be a, his own man and not have to have these own, these um, factions to be part of. But but we're still a few years away from that. Oh, of course, of course. This is a young kid who's going <laughs> to eventually reach the peak. There, no, it's a very very slow push. <laughs> Um, can we just call, okay, I have to say this, um, I don't know what the exact rating was for SmackDown, all I know was this, the rating, they're, they pull, hold off, they make a big deal about Goldberg is coming to the blue brand, um, and then we get this promo at the end, and the Undertaker shows up face to face, and then disappears, and all that. An iconic yeah. moment that's 15 years too late. Yes, that's another one I stole from you, Wrestle Park Talk, today. <laughs> but yes, it, wanna, once again. I don't want to Wrestle Talk beef. Yeah, um, don't, I don't blame you. They, they've been hitting grand slams lately. Yeah, but um, their, their numbers were down. It was, yeah, during that segment, they were at, like, it was the lowest for the show. Yeah. It's like, uh, but overall... Like it was over two million. Oh, like, still over two million, that. but the whole the rating was down for the week, and the rain that segment was down. Yep. What does that tell you, WWE? No we one's interested in shit from fifteen years ago. We don't. Uh, yes, we still we like Undertaker, but if he doesn't, we give know a good his win. in-ring run is done. This we, is finished. Yeah. If we, after last year's uh, Super Showdown in Australia. Um, and then, yeah. uh, that random fight they had somewhere with Sean Michaels and Triple H and Kane. I have no Triple idea H what you're talking Peck. about. Um, I don't know there where they were. There was a in. random accident yeah, that random. Triple H suffered at home <laughs> while hanging out with Sean and Undertaker and Kane showed up to try to fight them. You mean, you mean, um, Glenn Beck and, um, Mark and Mark. Callaway. I don't remember his last name. Callaway. Yeah, Callaway. And then Mike Higginbottom. <laughs> I mean, and Paul Levesque. We, we, we. Well, actually, come on. We we know that that Sean and Hunter know each other as Sean and Hunter. <laughs> but we all know that it really would have been Mark and uh, oh and Glenn showing up to in. To to the Connecticut Blue Bloods. <laughs> well, see, we know what really happened. These guys were over at um, Paul's house and having a few beers. Having a few beers, and they um, tried to help Paul out with something and lifting something because you know how delicate these um, old timers are. And oh, I know. Lifting like a pillow, and he just tore his like his pack right off. Blew the his pack right out. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. but yeah his career is oh, yeah and the rumor is that this this match is gonna main event this no card that event this the major fight of the night on friday that we don't have a card for still people what parking lot is this going <laughs> on in you know what it is it's random parking lots throughout the entire country Oh, it's gonna be done like World Star, where it's just a bunch of people with cell phones. Oh no, they're gonna have a full setup at all these locations because it's WWE. They have, to have they have a premium product that they have to get out there. But it's gonna oh, be like okay. twenty different. It's gonna be like fifteen different um, parking lots across the country, and 
and just for the hell of it, just to prove they can do it, one in Japan. Just for the, what? For the hell for it. That's blowing my mind. And you know how long that fight that, that fight's gonna be? It's gonna be like two minutes too. But they're gonna, of course they're, it's a squash because they're a match. billion dollar company. They're gonna fly and t those people out there and an entire crew out there to get that. <laughs> okay, okay, we we need to move on. Um, so sadly, I'm looking at time. We gotta cut a cut a, cut a segment. Sadly, that's going to be NXT Takeover 25. We got to no, cut that one. I refuse. We have to. We uh, got to talk. We got to talk NXT for at least a few seconds. Ah, uh, come on. Not not long. We don't have to go. We don't have to go long. But, okay. Okay. So let's just do, let's do this really quickly. So NXT Takeover. Um. Yeah. Uh, this one. Let me make the, yes. my my comments here. Uh. The matches were on par as they always are, but something happened after the first match with this show for me, and I could I got a sense it happened in the um with the audience too, when Roderick Strong lost, everyone kind of energy there changed to the point like oh fuck Adam Cole's not winning, undisputed yeah, because lose the, the feeling that continue. undisputed. Era was not going to win anything. Anything. They're going to continue with this um, storyline and then they're going to break up Undisputed Era. They don't want that. Everyone was there to see Undisputed um, rip through everyone and walk out with all the gold except for the North American Championship um, and just run, f run free. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. Everyone was still like, they were having fun with the matches. They were into the matches. But the energy was not the same after this loss. No, no. Um, it did pick up, kind of slowly return for the um, main event for the NXT Championship. But it was still wasn't on par to the very end of that match when it's like, holy shit! Like, are they are we like, as in typical um, Gar um, Johnny Gagaro type match fashion for a takeover? After your typical finish, it um, finish you normally would have even a great a good match for a takeover. Yeah, when a kick out happens. You start having these random crazy. We're taking it to that next level. Um, uh, who people, could win here? Yeah, is he? No, no, no. They're still gonna lose. People are still doubting it. But the energy was starting to return. It never fully, to me, turned. But people were. It was starting to get more people into really in there. And then when it happened. Adam Cole beat Johnny Gungaro on his own to, without cheating, to win the NXT Championship. Um, now, not to mention that he faked out Gungaro by faking to call down the Undisputed Era, era <laughs> allowing him to get a few extra minutes of recovery, a few extra seconds of recovery, <laughs> but he did Smart it. Smart move. And that audience exploded. Yeah. Um, with him. I, I don't know if it's just the fact that, and it, uh, that, Roderick Strong lost, and everyone was just like, "Oh no, Adam Cole might not win tonight," or no, it was definitely that. But there okay. was also something else that happened a week earlier. I mean, Double or Nothing happened, and the show overall just blew everyone's expectations yeah. out, out of the water. Not saying that every match was great. We've no. already gone over that. You yeah. can check out, um, last actually, last episode. week's episode where we go over that. Yeah. Uh, but it did, it had, that show had a, something for everyone. Yes. And this one didn't say have one for everyone. It had everything you want from an NXT TakeOver. But that you still a week after that, and you have that one thing where that crowd came to see undisputed sweep, right? And it, that when it changed, it the combination just kind of changed the energy. And after that first match, I mean, I wasn't watching the match fully dead on. I was still doing stuff on my um, laptop screen because I had it on my monitor screen. I was watching the show. Um, but as soon as that match was over, I was focusing more on what I was doing on my monitor, my 
laptop than the actual show because I was deflated. Oh shit! Not only because I was gonna lose a lot of cut matches this this night, um, yep. and but also because I'm like, okay, they're not winning the tag team champions, and Adam Cole is not gonna win. They're gonna do the opposite of what I predicted, and that's just def- was deflating. Not to mention that we had um, Eero Shirai lose to um, Shannon Baszler, which I thought was a mistake. Even though they did the post match attack where um, Shirai is levels. Baszler with the kendo stick <laughs> and just goes off on her. I'm sorry, I didn't care at that point because it's you had a, a moment where you could have capitalized on Io Shirai, but you chose not to. Yep. yep. Um. So who knows? But especially with the rumor with um that we now know this week that they're basically sh- Baszler is. A, but almost not to say a potential, but it's a when she's going to the main roster. Right, right. Um, Adam Cole is apparently a part of that rumor too, but um, who knows? So overall, while all the matches were on fire that like they normally are, there was just something about it. Thankfully, with the Adam Cole went at the end, he returned that and did help switch it around. But overall, I, I still remember how I felt after that first loss. I'm like, crap. This is the time they should be using it to get complete undisputed error over, completely like sweep, and they didn't. I don't know what the story they're going to be telling going forward, but I was disappointing. And by the way, can yeah. I just say this? Um, what? A, I can't remember what his name is in NXT, but the guy known as formerly known as Gunner from TNA. Yes. Holy shit, this guy, he is indestructible. That guy took so, <laughs> they, they really beat the shit out of him with the ladders in that match. Um, not to mention that, but Bobby um, Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, they, I don't know how Riley was able, to, was able to come out and lift up Adam Cole. Bobby Fish had a sling on his arm. Um, yeah. And according to Triple H, afterwards, they, it was precautionary. They think they knew what it was. They were just being precautionary, but they wouldn't know for sure until an MRI happened. But, so, but holy shit, that was a hard hitting ladder match. Like, and the, the, yeah. surpri- the surprise Street Profits victory, I'll give it to you. Like, no one thought the Street Profits were walking out with those belts. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think, think that, that was going to happen. So. Uh, which is good, but again, it was one of those things where it, it, people still want, and people were popped for that one too because it was such a surprise. But people still ultimately wanted the Undisputed Era to win it. So that's all I'm going to say about on that. Oh, we have one more news piece before we ju- jump into predictions really quickly. Um, oh, what? So there was a scruffle that Vince McMahon was involved in backstage this week, and I'm it sorry. was with a, someone surprising. Who? Who? Triple H. I I mean, so the chairman got pedigreed and spray painted DX on him, and Triple H just went back to work. No, is that what happened? It was like from what it was described as a scruffle, but it was quickly broken up a lot fast before anything really happened. But it was a, pronounced as a scruffle, and which means one, that two guys posted up on each other. They're like. Yeah. That's how big my chest is. Um, I'm gonna throw my were, dick on the table if I have to. Like it, it was probably like one of those things where it's about to possibly go to blows and people got them apart. Um, yeah. And it was and apparently from what was was being reported is that Triple H at frustrated over the quality trying to um, step up and try to get help get maybe make a power play and Vince saw as him overreaching and got was furious and this led to um probably not saying names but um calling each other out on things or something like that um i mean it was to the i'm gonna be honest really quickly it was to the point that um even afterwards they haven't they're not talking okay even after look sometimes when you find out that the boss is not pulling his weight and really not doing the job anymore you got to step up and be like yo yeah. 
You need to step down because you're not, you don't have the touch anymore. You're losing it. Now go on, get out to that pasture. So I don't know. We, we still haven't had much many details, but this is what's going on. Um, personally, with the rumors of that um, Shayna Baszler is possibly coming, calling up and then Adam Cole in there as well. Maybe this is another one of those things where Vince is like, I need some a top guy from NXT to come in for something fresh. We all knew, like, Baszler's time was coming. We knew it was a, a, inevitable. But we wanted Adam Cole to hold off. So, and maybe this was part of it, and maybe the whole ratings thing was part of it. It became, oh, oh, now you want to take my, the guy I just crowned as my champion to come up here? No, I'm yeah. done. This is not happening. No, you, you're not getting him. You're not doing this. You got all this talent that you don't know what to do with. Use them. Yeah. Use them right now. Yeah. So. Well, there, none of them are, super, are, are stars right now. Yeah, because you've been using them like shit. So yeah. use them. Because you've been using 50-50 booking. So, like, I can see that type of argument. I can see so, it. Well, we'll be interested to see how this plays out going forward. Um, and for that. All right, it's time for predictions. No, it's not. No, it's not. We got one more item. What do we have now? You just the want... clusterfuck. You just wanted to be able to do it to me. Yeah, I did. Uh, no, but there is. Uh, August 31st this year is a clusterfuck in the UK. And, and we don't have time to talk about this. We have some predictions to do. We're already over into the, the, the hour. We got, we got this. We got this. We got this. <laughs> so there are two shows happening in the UK. Um, Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Before we talk, cover that, we got, we're not going to cover that yet. So oh God, we all what know what's now? happening on the 31st. It is all out. AEW's next major pay-per-view where they'll oh, crown I was gonna... the inaugural... AWE World Champion between Chris oh. Jericho or Kingman Page. Oh, and then uh, I th I thought we were going to be talking about the uh, the the Welsh um, World Cup pre uh, qualifying game with uh, the Ireland. Oh, no, I was. Th it's a rugby game. I'm totally down for it. We're wrestling. We're a wrestling podcast, dude. Oh yeah. Sorry, yeah. not rugby talk. Yeah. So anyway, so we had a little you know, interesting announcement during Takeover this past uh, show. Where we're told of NXT, NXT UK is having another takeover on the 31st. Yeah. You know, everyone, everyone was like, oh, I think they even got an O chant for, in the arena after they, they put that graphic up. Because all yeah, they did. Know, they all knew. Um, and let's be honest, this is happening in UK. Uh, what city? Uh, it's happening in Cardiff. Cardiff. <laughs> Okay, it's at, it's, I just want to, um, so it's happening there in, um, in Cardiff um, at 8 o'clock their ish. time. Their time. Yeah. So it's going to be 3 here. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> 3 ish, I guess. Yes. Here for us. It's about 3, and it's going to probably be about a 3 and a half hour show. There, there's, there's not going to be competition. They're not competing with AEW. No. No, because AEW is going on at about 8 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, they're going on at 8 3 p.m. Eastern time in their uh, in the Great Britain Britain's time. <laughs> Greenwich Whatever Greenwich it's time. called over there, I don't know what it's called over there. Refer it's to it's GMT. GMT time. <laughs> Wait, isn't GMT like a TV show or a channel? <laughs> no, that's CMT. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyway. So their GM time, they'll be over there, um, happening. So it's not competing. But they did pick a hell of a time because, as you mentioned, they had the rugby. This, and didn't you didn't you tell me that before the show that um, it's with against Ireland, the Welsh versus the I Ireland. Yep. The game is in. It's um, in Cardiff. In Cardiff. Um. So that's just nuts. So, that game is going on at 2.30 in the afternoon. Their time. Uh, their time. And then, I mean, I depending, it could be a three-hour game. I don't really know how long rugby, rugby games last. Uh, but it could. Yes. Uh, I base it upon, time-wise, about pretty much any sports game, yeah. professional sports game. They're about three hours long-ish. Yeah. Um, that still brings you only to five. There's still a couple of hours before... 
NXT UK Cardiff, which is going to be at the Motor Point Arena, which sits 6,000 people ish. <laughs> so you have plenty of time to go to your pub, get down a few drinks, and head over to the show. Where you may have another another bite to eat and a couple more pints. Before you go home that, and watch AEW <laughs> at 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but UK Cardiff, I really I want to I wanna watch it just for the audience. Yeah. Because <laughs> it could be a rowdy crowd. There is going to be a rowdy crowd because... Not only are you going to have people who are non-rugby fans there, the hardcore hard wrestling fans, you may have some rugby fans who have been a little excited because their team won or pissed off because they lost. And, and or a little, a little pissed because they've been drinking since 11 in the morning. Yeah. Um, so who knows? But wait, 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 wait. Adam, didn't you tell me there's an, another show? There is one more show happening that day. New Japan Pro Wrestling is putting on the show Royal Quest. In that show is taking place in London. In what? Yep, at the uh, Copper Box Arena. Uh, that arena was, uh, it, for anybody who doesn't know what it is, it was used in the, I believe, the London Olympics. Oh, okay. Uh, it was for handball. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a venue that, that sits about 7,500. Okay. Uh, and when when WWE announced NXT 2K or drew up the plans for that show uh, to get to get the show in Cardiff and, and all that stuff, uh, New Japan had already announced their show and they'd sold about five thousand seats. No, uh, the the word was at that time twenty five hundred. Yeah, uh, according to Triple H, he they had this date. Um, and plan back in February, locked in since February. They didn't announce it because you, there was no point to announce it so late. Or and so, so early. early. So early. Yeah. Um, and they really were looking for the right time um, so it doesn't get drowned out with all, all this other stuff going on. So, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, because they are a, a company that is competing. New Japan said that they had, or, or sorry, through the dirt sheets, said that they had secured London as the site for this, for this event back in February. Nobody's saying exact dates. Yeah. So who knows which show is kind of the response show to the other. Yeah. Now, New Japan also, once they set up something, they've, they're they very good at quietly announcing shows. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, Royal Quest is going on on that day. And it, like, but it was on their, their website a while ago. Yeah. Like, they've had tickets up for sale for almost two months now. Yeah. Um, so, for people over in England, they're going to have a hell of a day. Oh, God, um, yeah. People here in the States are going to have a long day because... Yeah, so... You're going to watch, want to watch, you watch NXT UK in the afternoon, get a little recovery in, and then going on and watch it all out later that night. Whew. Yeah, and then if you're, if you're one of those people, if you're a die-hard wrestling fan, you're going to have to figure out which show that you're going to want to watch recorded. Yeah. Because there's a point where New Japan and NXT are doing they're doing their shows at the same time. Yeah. You got to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. All Out, luckily, is just like, hey, you know what? Today's going to be a big day of pro wrestling. Once again, they – that was not – really, they're the ones who kicked this entire weird thing off. Yeah. <laughs> because they announced All Out in their date. Yep. And everyone knew that it was going to be around at the same time that uh, All In was last yeah. year. And All In was what, September 7th? I think so. So this year they went one week earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's... And next thing you know, like people found out, it was like, oh yeah, New Japan's doing a show. And then WWE's like... Well, we've got a show for that date, too. All right. Everyone's got a show. It's like Oprah's giving out wrestling shows that day. 
<laughs> I, I, you know what would be funny? Defiant decides to throw a show that day. <laughs> Progress. Just like, you know what? Screw it. We're throwing a show that day for the hell of it. Uh, okay. So, if, ladies and gentlemen, if you're living over in the, um, the speck of an island that you call uh, a country, um, comment down below and crucify me for calling your, your home a speck of an island. But also, Dude, let us know what you, show you I, actually go see. You're going. You're gonna go watch. <laughs> I am not a UK native. I and I'm offended by what you just said. I'm. I apologize to all of the, all of the the English, the Welsh, the Scottish, the Irish. You're all wonderful people. No matter what Tim says about you. I only care about the Irish because I am Irish. So. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> All right, let's get on to those Dominion predictions. Right. So first off, we got to get some statistics out of the way. Oh, what what's the statistics? Okay, so Adam, right now you stand at a 2 and 1 record. I yes, have the I opposite do. of that. A 1 and 2 record. Your win loss percentage is a 67 win streak wins percentage in a 33 Thirty-three percent losing streak, um, win percentage. You are on a two-card um, win streak. I have Damn right, I am. the opposite of that. I have a thirty-three percent win win percentage, which, and which a sixty-seven percent normally... losing streak uh, percentage, and a two. I have a two-card um, losing streak. Normally, NXT TakeOver is your show to dominate me on. Yeah. I I, uh, I stood by my the Undisputed Era, and I still did. They made the wrong... Triple H made the wrong call. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, normally, after those matches, made the I don't right really care. Call. Even when I'm wrong, I don't usually don't care to call him. I'm sticking by my calls here. He made a mistake on this card. I'm sorry. All right. So... We, have, we got that out there. So, we're going into our third show in a row. Damn right we are. Over the next, let's see. Going into next week, we will have finally get a little break from predictions. Only to go back into predictions the following week for Stomping Ground. <laughs> Damn right. I can't wait. All right, so here we're going to go through. We have nine matches on the card. We have two questions for potential tiebreakers. Uh, so we're just going to come right down and start the bomb down. So we're going to start out with John Moxley going against Shuta um, Uno? Uma? No? Ima no? I have no clue. Shuta Umino. Umino. You, do the, you, have the, you have the card? Yeah, I've got the card here. Yeah, yeah you say. I'm going to butcher these names. Uh, we've got John Moxley versus Shota Umino. Umino. Um, I, honestly, it's a squash match. It's Moxley. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an obvious one. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, next up. Uh, now, interesting fact, though. Uh, Shota is Red Shoe's son. Yes. Uh, oh, interesting. You know what? If now... If, um, New Japan wants to be a little bit more, add a little bit more like WWE in any way, shape, or form. See, you just had your new star, John Moxie, win one of your prestigious titles. So you want to be it. You have now must have him lose to this no name, and you'll be a little bit more like WWE. <laughs> no, no, no 50 50 booking. Well, it you wouldn't don't be need that shit. It wouldn't be 50 50 booking because be, he's not facing um, Juice Robinson again. But Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, but no, like, if you want to be like, well, I'm just saying, if you want to be like more WWE and completely um, devalue your prestigious championships, is how you Dude, do it. I, just telling you. I don't know why. I don't know why you keep saying prestigious championship. It's a fourth tier championship, okay, man. You're thinking Seriously. of WWE. I put this up as the um, a, more of a third tier. Um, you put this above the junior heavyweight championship? Yes. Oh, uh, I don't. Because Junior Heavyweight Championship is a weight class, a separate weight class. Yeah, but the the number one belt is the is the heavyweight championship belt. Yes. It's a weight class belt. Yes. So is the and every other one is a heavyweight belt. So these are tiered belts. 
This is a third tiered belt in the heavyweight division. Uh, uh, actually, I don't think it has a. I don't think it's a heavyweight belt. It is. Okay. Um, pretty much, I, I'm assuming for basically because uh, we haven't had a junior heavyweight go um win it or challenge, challenge for, it. for it. Um, basically, Intercontinental Championship in the United States. I just see them as um heavyweight belts. Um. Because that's how we always see it, um, and then you have the um, open weight championship, which is the there's no weight limit, anyone. Yeah. Um, eh. I would love to see a second tiered um, light junior heavyweight championship be brought in. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's the WWE. WWE. If they introduce, if they introduce another, another belt, belt, it's, it's just, just gonna ruin everything. everything. This is not the WWE. This is New Japan. Oh well, I mean they got the. Uh, Junior heavyweight cha- tag championship. I'm talking about singles. Singles. Here. Okay. Um. But. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. If they brought in a belt, it is a. It's more belts that the New Japan has. But I think it'd be interesting to have a second junior heavyweight title for a second well, tier. I, everything they always seem to somehow make that when they're pushing that belt. Mm-hmm. Whatever belt it is at the time, yeah, seems like the most important thing in whatever storyline it's in. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's just one of those things which is interesting. Okay. So what's the next matchup? We already had. <laughs> next up, we've got a singles match of Satoshi Kojima versus Shingo Takaki. Um. I don't recognize any of these names. Neither do I. Uh. You know what? I'm taking uh, Takagi. All right, I'm going with uh, the other guy. Kojima. Okay. Kojima. Okay, so you have... <laughs> okay, you have... You have selected ST. I've selected SK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have a tag team matchup of Jushin Thunder Liger and Yoshihashi versus Suzuki Gun, represented by Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr., Oh, I'm so sorry, Yoshihashi and, Ju- and, and Thunder. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm going with Suzuki Gun. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one. We're going Suzuki Gun on this one. <laughs> as soon as I saw Zack Saber Jimmy, yeah, he's winning. I it, it's just gonna be one of those that it's just going to be Zack Saber Jr. tying people up, and when they escape from that. Uh, Minoru Suzuki just kicking their ass. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll have right. a spot where we'll have Zack Sabre Jr. tying them up while um, Suzuki is kicking their ass. Oh, probably. Probably. All right. Next up, we have a six man tag team match. Uh, it's Taduki, Ta- Taguchi Japan, uh, represented by Hiroshi Tanahashi, Juice Robinson, and uh, Ryusuke uh, Taguchi. Versus Bullet Club, represented by Jay White, Chase Owens, and Taijiri Ishimori. Oh, this one's a tough one. Ooh. See, if this was WWE, I would go with uh, um, Tujichi, um, Taguchi Gun, uh, Japan, because uh, Tanahashi just lost to Jay White at the um, Best of the Super Juniors finals. But it's not and Juice degree. Robinson just walked, lost. Yeah. Um, so this is also this is not um, WWE. This is New Japan. <sighs> Jay White is white hot right now. You know I'm what? Going I'm going Bullet, Bullet Club. Club. I'm going Bullet Club. Yeah. I picked it first. You can't take it. You have to take the other one. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> All right. Next oh, matchup. That, that's going to be an interesting six-man tag match. I like yeah, that setup. All right, next up, we've got a singles match for the Never Openweight Championship. It's uh, Tai Chi defending the title against Tomohiro Ishii. I forgot. That one was the title match. Okay, that's good now. Um, Did you forget to add this match in? No, it's in there. I just didn't put, put, I forgot to put it blue. So we know oh, it was a title okay. match. Um, uh... I don't know. You go. <laughs> you go first on this one. Um. Damn. This this is. You know, I'm gonna go champion retains. Champions winning. 
Yeah, yeah might, might as well. well. Might, might as, as well. well. I said first. You can't go with the other guy. I know. No. I know. No. I know. No. Oh, All right. but Ishii is always, always the guy who's, who's like, like in contention, contention but hardly ha holds, holds it for any length of time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah no, I have to go. With, uh, I have to go with Tai Chi. Okay. Yeah. All I mean, right. I'm looking forward to seeing these two battle. <laughs> oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Next up is the uh, tag team match for the IWGP Tag Team Champion Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. Uh, uh, it's Gorillas of Destiny, Tamatanga and Tonga Lo Loa. Uh, Defending their title against Los Ignobles, yeah, uh, De Japon, Sonata and Evil. I keep screwing up that name because it's. I am terrible with like Spanish. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad that we don't do AAA here. <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh, Girls of Destiny's been on fire nope. lately. I'm sticking with my. I'm sticking with Tomatonga, the bad boy. Sticking with him. GD. Yep. You're going GOD God? is retaining, retaining their championships. They're going to continue to keep that sack full of belts. You're, you're going with God? Yep. <laughs> okay, you're going with God. Oh, that's a tough one. We've had too many lately to. I'll take a risk. I'll go with. Um, Sonata and I'm playing S E. I'm not okay. playing trying to abbreviate that. You're not going L I D J? No. I'm gonna go S V. Okay. S -E. So I'm gonna say we're gonna have a title change. Alright. I can say this I can do this one. I can do this one. I can pronounce that. Okay, so this <laughs> is for the IWGP junior heavyweight <laughs> champion where we're gonna have Draw gone, Lee versus Will Ospreay, the winner of the Super Juniors. Best of the Super Juniors. Did you just purposely screw that up? I don't know what you're talking about. It's Dragon Lee. No, I'm pretty sure it's Draw gone. <laughs> it's, it's Dragon Lee. Uh, Will Ospreay. Yeah. Oh, Will. Will is on fire right now. Uh. We, okay, enough with you saying Will's on fire. He's he never not on fire. To my mixtape. He's never not on fire. I know that's true. He has moved up to Supernova now. <laughs> Actually, this year he has seen like he made he made kind of a a declaration at the end of last year, beginning of this year, where it was just like, you know what, I'm I'm doing this. I'm going for things that I've never gone for before. I'm not just there to put on a match. I'm not there to put on a show. I'm there to win. And I was like, oh, oh, Will is, Will is determined. I've got a feeling that over the next couple of years, we're going to see him transition to the heavyweights. Oh, yeah. Put on a little bit, a little bit of bulk, transition to the heavyweights, because we're already seeing him change up his style a little bit. Yeah. Um. And from what I've been told, the match that he had in the finals, again, I can't remember the guy's name he beat, but that was a, like, a spitfire of a fucking match from what I've been told, what I've been seeing on there. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a barn. I can't even say it's a barn burner. It's, the barn's gone, and the match is still going on. Like, they're starting <laughs> to burn down the house and the crops. Yeah, let's see. Let's get right there. Uh, Shingo, uh, actually, Shingo, Shingo Takagi. Yeah, from what I've told, like, yeah, it's like they just didn't burn the barn down. They take the house and the crops with it, and possibly the neighbor's crops too. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, okay, Adam, got to pick. Oh, I, I'm I'm choosing Will Ospreay. You're going with Will Ospreay? Yeah, he's getting the title this time. It's his time. I think so, too. His time is now. Um, you can't see him. His time is now. Yeah. Dragon Lee's had a good run since um, Wrestle Kingdom, so I think it's a good time for to put the belt back on Will Ospreay. Um, yep. I don't think he need, um, Will needs a very long junior heavyweight championship run, 
But no. like, yeah, this would be a good time because he's only held the um, open weight championship. Right. So having come, dropping back down to the junior heavyweight championship for a little bit and then building what I'd love to see um, happen is build up and maybe take out um, crap. Um, Kota Ibushi is the champion, but maybe Naito w- will win it. We'll get to that match in a second. Um, and maybe uh, we'll also take the inter- Intercontinental title from uh, Naito. And then at um, Wrestle Kingdom 14, um, we'll get a, um, a rematch of Kota Ibushi versus Will Ospreay for the Intercontinental Championship, and Ibushi will win that one. Oh, that would be cool. So, all right, well, speaking of that, our next matchup is, I can actually say this one, Kota Ibushi yeah. versus Tetsuo Naito for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Adam, who do you pick? You know what? I'm, uh... I'm choosing Naito. Ooh, you're going Naito. Uh, the reason that I'm I'm doing this is I'm starting to see a, a they're building Naito a certain way, and he yeah. keeps fitting into into a mold that I've seen in WWE before. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the gatekeeper. Yep. Yeah. Once you have gotten past him, you may enter the scene for the the heavyweight championship. You may float ab- among those ethereals. Um, Chris, um, Chris Jericho, Jericho was this person. This person. Yeah. Um, uh, Edge. No, not yeah, Edge. Edge. Wait, Wait, who was... Oh, there's somebody else. Like, Jericho has held the Intercontinental title, like... He holds the record. Shit ton of times. He holds he the record of nine. What? what? Yeah. Jericho holds the record of Intercontinental Champion nine times in WWE. And I, I have a feeling that Naito will be for New Japan, will be that guy that you're, you're just like, yep, intercontinental guy. Yeah. We all know where you where you were at. You brought such an amazing, all those amazing matches for that belt. I'm going Abushi retain. Retaining? Yes. That is surprising. I, I mean, I love I love Abushi, and this is going to be a great match, but I really think that Naito is going to be, this is his belt, his turf, He's going to win here. I, it's possibly. I can actually see that. I I don't think so. I think um, Abushi needs a good little run with the IC belt beyond this. Um, oh, so. I, I've got a feeling that he would win it back, like, it, just a little down the road. I don't want him to win it back. When he drops it, I want him to drop it and then and go into um, a world title pitcher. Okay. But, all right, so we have the final match. You say his first name because I can't say it. All right, this matchup is for is a singles match. It's it's for one fall, one fall for the IWGP Heavyweight uh, 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 Championship. No, 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 it's a sixty-minute time limit. Uh, yeah, but it's one fall. Yeah, one fall for a sixty-minute time limit. Yeah, okay. Um, it is between Kazuchika Okada versus Chris Jericho. The brain maker versus the pain maker. So do you think uh, Jericho is going to be the number one contender for the AW, AEW championship and hold the IWGP heavyweight championship? I doubt it, but that's not going to stop me from making that as my pick. Really? Really, I am, like, utterly surprised that you would actually choose uh, Jericho on this one. It would blow my mind, and I think the internet might melt a little bit if it did happen. Oh, so do I. But I'm going to take Okada. Yeah, I knew you were going to. I don't think, I I just don't, I doubt he's going to, but I could see them um, putting the belt on Jericho and then him drop it uh, in a month or so. At uh, the G1 special in San Francisco? Yeah, or something like that. Um, have him drop that there um, back to Okada or to someone else. Um, no, no. I see a, a, a problem. I don't know. Who would you put against Okada at that spe- at that show? I don't know. I Jay? Think it, Juice? I, I think John be Moxley? I don't know. Possible. See, I think it's better to have someone like a Jericho hold that championship, and then you can build whoever your next build up. Like if Kabushi is your next, you you were on build up. 
Wrestle Kingdom, Kota Ibushi wins um, the G1 and challenges Chris Jericho for the IWGP Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Um, that would be that'd awesome. Be awesome. Would be a great thing um, for it. Because, mm -hmm. and with, yes, you could say it's another, he's taking another, he's a part timer over there who's taking one of the belts and taking it off. But here's the thing those belts over in New Japan, they only defend them at major events like this. Their house yeah. shows, the titles aren't, aren't really defended. Because entire defense is a very honorable and protected match. Yeah, it's, it's a, a prestigious, prestigious match. match. Yeah. So those haven't had big cards. So having him disappear and not be in the house, it doesn't hurt the, the belts because of that. Right. Um, so I would be okay with that. Um, I just don't think it's go I don't think it's gonna happen, but I just want to cover my bases. Now okay. I'm gonna be. I will at least say this. I will be fucking pissed off at myself if that's the match that loses this card for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that that would suck that. for you. Like, every single pick I have, I get right, and or something like that. And like we're tied or something. Like, we end up tying, and it comes down to that matchup, and then I lose it for it. That would be hilarious. That would be amazing and wonderful for me. All right, Tim, what are the questions? Okay, so these are not yes or no questions. You have to actually give us to give an answer. Now, here's oh. how this, this is how it's going to work. So the first question, which is how many championships will change hands? Close the person with the closest number to it gets the win. So to guarantee extra point in the break of a tie, if we have a tie. Um, which we technically shouldn't. Nah, maybe. Let's see, we got one, two, three. There are three that we agree on. Hold on. One, two, three. Well, four. I'm saying that three, three will change, change hands. hands. We have four because that we agree on. But there's nine matches. So, um, we're going to have to worry about that. So, you're going to say three. Yep. yep. It's, it's the, the three, three that, that I predicted, predicted will change, change hands. Um, let's see. I didn't predict that one. I did. I did. I did not. I did. So I actually said three, two. But you know what the, for the hell of it? I'm going to say two. Two? Huh. <laughs> Because this doesn't hurt. I can again. take so if only two change hand or only one change hand. I beat you to that point. That's, That's true. true. But if but four change hands, hands, I beat that. I got yes. you on that point. I have a I have yes or no question, question that we can add, add in though. Okay, uh, we'll add that after this one. The next question. Okay. Next question is, um, and this is a, a tough one because we have nine matches. Not all of them are going to be pot, but ten, you can use this for. But which match will steal the show? Uh, I already know my pick. No, 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 no. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, say it. it. Uh, Dragon, Dragon Lee versus, versus Will Ospreay. Uh, you can't. That's my pick. Because you just put that one in there. <laughs> it's already in my column. You're gonna pick a right. different one. <laughs> I don't know then. <laughs> I might put it in there for you. Yeah, but I knew you were gonna I, do that too. I'm like, I, I feel, already knew this. Well, I'm like looking it over. I'm like, I kind of feel that that's going to be the, you know, it's going to end up being like what everyone's talking about, unless something major, like Chris Jericho winning. <laughs> winning. Well, this means it's uh, the the ma the match of the night, the show stealer though. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a moment stealer, but it's not the show stealer. Match. Right. Uh, all right, what's your yes or no question? Will Okada's thighs be visible? <laughs> and I'm saying no. Uh, I'll go yes then. <laughs> okay. There's actually, there's no re um, pro um, penalty to go take the opposite answer to these no. questions. Because 
Um, it doesn't hurt you. So it's like, nope. no, we're we're in a competition. I'm taking the exact opposite. <laughs> All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us know down in the comment section of what you thought of our prediction. Give us your own predictions for this show and what match you're looking more forward to. Um, be sure to answer the three questions. How many championships do you think will change hands? What match will be the show stealer? And will Okada's thighs be visible? Let us know down in the comment section. Um, on your way down there, Go ahead and give this video, a, this podcast, a thumbs up. You've been listening to this podcast for an, over an hour and a half. So I know you love listening to me, but listening to Adam is god awful. Just try looking at his horrible face. Come on, you got to wrap it up, buddy. Yeah. You, your face <laughs> you don't need like, to ramble about my face. I know. Your face is like horrible. Thanos' chin. <laughs> oh. Anyways. Uh, since you're giving us a thumbs up, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring ding. that, ring that bell, ding ding, and get bent.